Hey guys, welcome to the 151st c -sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to continue showing you how to overload operators. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and an item class. And in your item class, just make sure that you have a public integer property. And all of these other operators that I have in here, you're not going to need. Um, these are just operators that we created in previous tutorials. Alright, so the operators that we're going to be overloading today are the increment operator and the decrement operator. So what we're basically going to be doing is just adding one to the item's price and taking one off of the item's price, so subtracting one from the item's price. Alright, so all we're going to do here is we're going to type public and static because in order to overload an operator you must make your operator both public and static. And we're going to be returning an item this time instead of a pool because we're basically going to be returning a new item with a price either one higher or one lower, depending on which operator we overload right here. So I'm going to type item, and then I'm just going to type operator because after all, we're going to be overloading an operator. And the first operator that we're going to be overloading is the plus plus operator, so we're just going to go right here and type plus plus. And we're only going to have to call for one parameter here because we're only going to have one item that we're incrementing at a time. So I'm just going to type item, and I'll just call it item. All right. And then we can't just do return item.price plus plus, because item.price is an integer, so we can't return an integer. So what we're going to have to do is create a new item. I'll just call it i, and set it equal to a new item. And then we're just going to say i's price equals the item that the user like increments plus one. So actually we need to add the price. All right. So this item's price is equal to the item's price that we increment plus one. And then we're just going to return this item that we created right here. So we can return i. All right. So now if we go up here and create a new item, I'll just call it i and set it equal to a new item. I'll say i's price equals 2, and then we're just going to say i++. Plus plus. And what i++ plus plus will do is it will just increment this item's price by 1. All right, so now if we display in a message box this item's price, we should get a 3 because we first set it to 2, and then we increment it by 1. So we're just going to show i, i's price dot 2 strings since price is an integer. So now we need to debug here. We should just get three in a message box. Yep, perfect. And we can also overload the decrement operator, but as you notice, we didn't have to overload both of these. So you can only overload one. You don't need to overload both at the same time, like these up here. All right, so if we wanted to overload the decrement operator, we could just type public static and item because we're going to be returning a new item. We're going to type operator because we're going to be overloading an operator. And then we're just going to type minus minus because the operator that we're going to be overloading is the decrement operator. And then the user is only going to have to pass one item through here because they're only going to be decrementing one item's price. So we're just going to say item, and I'll just call it item. And this is basically just going to be the same code that we used for the increment one. So we're just going to create a new item, i, and set it equal to a new item. And then we're going to say i's price equals item dot price minus one instead of plus one since we're using the decrement operator instead of the increment operator. And then we're just going to return this new item that we created here. So return i. All right, so now if we do minus minus instead of plus plus, we should get one in a message box. Since the uh, initial price was two, we're just going to decrease that by one and then display that in a message box. So we should get one. Yep, perfect. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so see you guys.